In this video, we'll dive into the world of crystal parameters, exploring what they are, how they're used, and the different systems for representing them. Crystal parameters are like measurements that tell us how a crystal's face is shaped. They show how far the face cuts into the crystal's main axis. Basically, they are ratios that compare the distances from the crystal's center to where the face touches each axis. The classification of crystallographic planes utilizes a nomenclature system that references three imaginary lines known as crystallographic axes. These axes are typically chosen to coincide with the edges of the unit cell, which is the smallest repeating unit in the crystal lattice. While hexagonal crystals present a unique case, the axes in most crystal systems exhibit equal lengths and angles, reflecting the symmetry of the unit cell. Let us now discuss the terms unit form and unit length. Imagine a crystal face that touches the crystallographic axes at specific points. This face can be designated as the unit form, and these intersecting points define the unit lengths for those axes. The unit length serves as a reference point for measuring the intercepts of other faces of the crystal. Now, any other face of the crystal will intersect the axis at distances that are either infinitely long or a simple fraction of the unit lengths. For example, a face might intersect the A axis at twice the unit length, the B axis at the unit length, and run parallel to the C axis. So, to fully describe a crystal face, we need to know whether it touches one, two, or all three axes. If so, where does it cross each axis compared to the unit length? We express this as a ratio. You might be wondering why it's important to learn about crystal faces. Well, let me tell you, crystal faces are key to understanding crystals. They help identify minerals, reveal their structure, and show us how they grow. By studying them, we gain valuable insight into the world of crystallography. We had discussed that the ratio of distances where a crystal face cuts each axis compared to the unit form is written as a fraction. These fractions are called crystal parameters and tell us how the face is positioned within the crystal. To visualize crystal parameters, let's examine this diagram. The imaginary lines labeled OX, OY, and OZ represent the crystallographic axis which define the orientation and symmetry of the crystal. Imagine a triangle representing a crystal face. This triangle touches the crystallographic axes at points A, B, and C. We call this our reference face, which is the unit form used to measure other faces in the crystal. Here, the crystal structural parameters are established by the relative lengths between the distances OA, OB, and OC. These ratios measure the extent to which the crystal face ABC intersects each of the fundamental crystallographic axes. Now, let's look at another face of the crystal, DEF. It's a different face from ABC. It crosses the x-axis at the same spot as ABC, but it goes twice as far on the y-axis and only half as far on the z-axis. We can use ratios to describe these relationships, that is, 1 is to 1 for the x-axis, 2 is to 1 for the y-axis, and 1 is to 2 for the z-axis. These ratios are what we call the parameters of face, DEF. This way of describing crystal faces uses ratios to show how a face is tilted. We can also flip these ratios to get indices, which give us another way to understand crystal shapes. Basically, if we know the size of the unit form, we can easily describe the size of other faces using ratios. Now, let's explore the following two commonly used methods for representing crystal faces. Weiss parameter was introduced by Christian Samuel Weiss in 1818. It is a fundamental tool in crystallography, providing a way to quantify how a crystal face intersects the crystallographic axes. They essentially express the relative distances at which a particular face cuts each axis, compared to a chosen reference face, known as the unit face or form. To determine the Weiss parameters, we first need to identify the intercepts of both the face of interest and the unit form. The intercepts represent the points where each face intersects the respective axes. 
Once we have these intercepts, we divide the intercepts of the face of interest by the corresponding intercepts of the unit face. This gives us a ratio that represents the relative distances at which the two faces cut each axis. Let's say the unit face A has intercepts of 7.08, 8.70 and 16.57 cm on the x, y and z axes respectively. Another face B has intercepts of 14.95, 18.34 and 11.65 cm. Now, dividing the intercepts of B by those of A yields this result. This indicates that phase B cuts the X and Y axes 2.111 and 2.108 times farther out than the unit phase, while it cuts the Z axis only 0.703 times as far. To express these ratios in the simplest whole numbers, we divide all the numbers by the smallest one among them. In this case, dividing by 0.703 gives us approximately 3x, 3y, 1z. These are the y's parameters for phase B. It is important to note that slight deviations from whole numbers in the y's parameters are often attributed to experimental errors in measuring the intercepts. However, the core concept remains the same. Y's parameters provide a concise way to describe the orientation of a crystal face relative to the crystallographic axis. These are some of the applications of Y's parameters. Feel free to pause the video and review them. Let us now discuss the index system of Miller. Miller indices were introduced by these two scientists. They are a simpler way to represent the same information that Y's parameters provide. Miller indices are obtained by taking the reciprocals of the Y's parameters and clearing any fractions. They are often easier to work with and are commonly used in crystallography. Let's take a crystal face with Y's parameters of 2x, y, and infinity z. This means it intersects the A axis at 2 units, the B axis at 1 unit, and is parallel to the C axis. To convert Y's parameters to Miller indices, we first calculate the reciprocals of these parameters. If a face is parallel to an axis, its reciprocal is 0. The reciprocals of these Y's parameters are 1 by 2, 1, and 0. Multiplying by 2, we get 1, 2, and 0. So, there you have it. We've successfully converted Y's parameters to Miller indices. Here are some more examples of converting Y's parameters to Miller indices. Now, what if we want to directly determine the Miller indices from the intercepts of a face, bypassing the calculation of Y's parameters? Here's the streamlined procedure. First, we divide the intercept of the unit face on each axis by the intercept of the unknown face on the same axis. Next, we normalize the ratios by dividing them all by the smallest of the ratios. This ensures we have whole numbers. Finally, if any ratios are still fractions, multiply or divide them by a suitable factor to obtain whole numbers. Additionally, simplify the indices further by dividing them by a common factor. By following these steps, you can directly determine Miller indices from the intercepts of a crystal face. This method is particularly useful when the Y's parameters are difficult to calculate or when you have direct measurements of intercepts. Make sure to take a look at these essential rules for writing crystal face symbols using Miller indices. These are some of the key applications of Miller indices. You can pause the video and have a look at these points. I mentioned before that Miller indices are commonly used instead of Y's indices. Let's explore why that's the case. Miller indices offer a superior method for describing the orientation of crystal planes within a crystalline material when compared to alternatives like Y's parameters. In conclusion, Miller indices are a great way to describe crystal structures. They're easy to use and understand.